two people. Lauren, you got a few extra seconds over there. We're going to start with Gemma. Let's see what they built. We didn't give them a lot of time. Are you ready? Ready to go. OK, no pressure. It's only your career. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> All right, so in the spirit of traveling to Vegas for knowledge and because I also love to travel myself, I decided to build a quick travel app. Um, because we had just a short amount of time to build a minimum viable product, I utilized the time request, or rather time off request template in the App Engine Studio in order to just spin up the app quick. So I'll just walk through a little bit of what I did here. I um, just modified the portal a little bit, as well as just changed some of the text here. And the nice thing about the template is that you can just modify it to your use case. So what I did with this form, I just changed some of the language here for our use case, and we'll just fill it out quickly. Um, we'll go for a long weekend in June. That sounds really nice. There we go, and choose our departure location. I'll just choose this first one, London, and then our destination, which is Bali. I've always wanted to go to Bali, let's go. And then I'm sure we'll need a reason, the same reason after this week for it to go on a little break. Mm -hmm. So we'll put that in and then submit our request. So this is the requesters page where you can always go back and get some up-to-date information, but I just wanted to showcase a little bit of our integration capabilities that we do have on the platform and how easy it is and quick it is to do. So I just have a little Google map here that's showing our departure location and also our destination. So there you go, quick build travel app. It's pretty good, it's pretty good. good Gemma, <laughs> nice job. Way to go. Way to go, Gemma. <laughs> All right, you had definitely 45 extra seconds, so this better be much better. Let's see what you got. 45 seconds count, okay? <laughs> so employees are returning to the office, but there are few groups that are as impacted as the pets that we've been hanging out with full time for the last two and a half years. So I came up with Gooby, which is an app actually named after my own dog. And uh, it's an application that can, uh, employers can use to facilitate pet care while their employees adjust to getting back to the office. So I used a template, it gave me 80% of what I needed. Uh, the other 20% are just configurations, like using a spreadsheet to create a table, using existing components. Um, and then I just created a, a method to add your pet to our system. So let's say I'm giving Gooby a brother, a little meatball named Rodeo. What's that? It's a cool name, right? See uh, we're going to add Rodeo, and then I'm going to take him to our dog walk at headquarters on Friday. And it's simple. It's a minimum viable product, super lightweight, and it gives us a way to track this kind of wellness activity. Let's hear it for Lauren. Oh, yeah. Way to go, Lauren. <laughs> Great job. Thanks. Great my job. dog's a moron. I'm Great not job. bringing my dog to work. Um, <laughs> Seriously, like, that's fantastic. We're going to put both Gemma and Lauren's work on the Knowledge Portal. If you want to see the exact steps they took in this relatively short amount of time to build those apps, we're going to give it to you. So let's give it up one more time for Gemma and Lauren. To automate at unprecedented speed and scale. And to achieve that scale, we need to enable more and more people to be creators themselves. So whether you're Bob in finance or Helen in legal, if you have a business process that's in dire need of automation, then we want to enable you to be your own hyper-automation hero. Now, as we start to think about enabling more and more of these non-traditional developers to build on the platform, there's a few things we have to consider. So first, how can we ensure that they're building according to your best practices? Two, how do we provide them with a seamless and intuitive experience that ensures that they can build end-to-end -end on their own? And number three, for you admins and platform owners out there, how can we provide you with the tools and governance you need to ensure these apps are safe for production? Well, that's why I'm excited to be here today, because I get to show off some of our latest innovations that do exactly just that. So let's get into it, huh? All right. So here I am in App Engine Studio. So App Engine Studio enables developers of all skill sets to build apps on the platform utilizing an intuitive, low-code environment. Now, as part of this offering, we ship what we call application templates. And these are really meant to accelerate and kickstart your development. Now, with our latest release, we've actually enabled you to build your own templates. So if you want to ensure that your developers are adhering to your best practices, well, now you can do just that. And so to show you, I am going to go ahead and just build a really simple task approval template. And you can see how easy this really is. All right. So I'm going to go over here to Templates. Go ahead and click on Create New Template. 
What's a really cool feature is that I can either choose to start from an existing app or I can start from scratch. So for this purpose of this demo, I'm gonna go ahead and start from scratch. Continue, let's go ahead and give it a name. Let's just call it the task approval template. Quick description here. There we go. All right. All right. So that sets up our template. Now again, this is a task approval template. So what we need, we need a table. So let's go ahead and click add, create new table. I'm gonna say create from an existing table, otherwise known as extend. I know, I know. Right. Click continue. Let's go ahead and select our friend, the task table. I'll continue. Again, this is a template, so I'm just gonna give it kind of a generic name, call it my task. I'll continue there. All right. So now we have our task-based table. Again, this is an approval template. So let's go ahead and add some backend automation that actually does the approval. So I'm gonna click Add, Flow. And what's really fun about App Engine Studio is even when I'm building a flow, I have a series of templates I can select. But again, for the purpose of this demo, let's go ahead and build from scratch. Let's go ahead and call that the My Approval Flow. There we go. And let's open this up in Flow Designer. All right. So in Flow Design, the first thing I want to do is I want to configure my trigger. So let's go ahead and say when a record is created from the My Task table, the table we just created. And now that we have our trigger set up, let's go ahead and set up that approval step. So come down here, say ask for approval. Let's go ahead and configure that. Let's drag in the trigger record. Scroll down. And let's say let's approve when anyone approves. And let's just select our good friend, good old system administrator. All right, so now we have the approval step set up. Let's go ahead and take this one step further. Let's go ahead and add some flow logic that will set this up to do something when this task is approved. Let's go ahead and drag in the approval stay here and say approved. There we go. So again, this is a template, so we're not gonna define what's actually gonna happen when the task is approved. We're just gonna set this up so the next developer is ready to go. So that looks good, I'm gonna go ahead and save. Close out of this flow. So we've got our table, we've got our backend automation. So let's go ahead and just add a role. So build a role, say requester. There we go. Let's just make sure the requester has create and read access to the my task table that's part of this template. All right, there we go. Now we have our role, we have our ACL set up. So all in all, this template pretty much does what we need it to do, tasks and approvals. So let's go ahead and save. All right, there we go. We now have our task approval template. That was pretty easy. It's definitely easy, Chris. And that's the thing is, when I look in the, in the crowd, there's creators here. They've created these applications. And sometimes when they want to show off that application, there's some other department that's like, hey, I want that. I want that for me. I think I heard you say it earlier, but just want to make sure. They can actually take that application that they've proven successful in their organization, make a template from it, put the right guardrails on it if you need, whether that's access controls or the things that are specific to your business, and then they can reuse that as a template. Is that right? That's right, yeah. So I skipped over that part really quick so Marcus could have his talk track. It's true. So we practiced. <laughs> but yes, absolutely. If you don't want to take the manual steps to create a template from scratch, you can absolutely start from an existing application. It makes it really, really easy. And it's, that's exactly how you get scale. We know people are innovating. We know we want to empower more people to create. But how can we do it in a safer way? And I think having templates allows you to create those guardrails so you can feel a lot safer about what is being created. Now, all right, we created the template easy enough. Let's use it. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. So let's create an app. I'm logged in here as Amelia. Now, she's one of our aspiring hyper automation heroes. Now, what she wants to do is she actually wants to create a tuition reimbursement app for her department. So what she's going to do is she's going to come into App Engine Studio, go ahead and click on templates, go ahead and peruse the library of templates. Now, she knows as part of her use case that tuition reimbursements typically require some sort of approval. So she sees the task approval template and says, all right, looks good to me. Let's go ahead and use that template. Now let's go ahead and create that app based on this template, call it tuition reimbursement, continue. All right. So we have our app, and we can see that it gave us everything that came in the template. Now, the first thing that she's going to want to do is that she's going to click into the table, which opens it up in this beautiful table builder. If you haven't seen this, check it out. It's awesome. 
Now, of course, we don't want a table called my task. Let's go ahead and just change the name over to tuition reimbursement. There we go. All right. Now let's go ahead and add some fields to this table that are specific to this use case. Let's do course name, which is a string. Let's go ahead and do institution name, another string. And lastly, let's do an amount field, but let's change that over to a currency. All right, there we go. Okay, so we've used Table Builder. We've added our new fields for our use case. Now check this out. With one click, I'm now into the new modern form builder. Wait, so, you're saying you didn't click a link and have to open it up somewhere else right there? Right there. Right there. Wow. Now, I know Marcus mentioned this before, but this truly does deserve an encore. New modern form builder, not only can you do form layout with dot walk fields, you can do UI policies, dependent choices, and Chuck, what's that other thing? Reference qualifiers. Reference qualifiers, all in one UI. So really, really awesome, definitely check it out. All right, back to our use case. So for this tuition reimbursement use case, I'm gonna add a new section here, let's call it course information. Let's go ahead and make that a two column. And we're just gonna put those fields that we created onto the form. So let's go ahead and do that, course name, all right, institution name, all right, there we go. And last but not least, let's go ahead and put that amount field on here. There it goes. All right, so now, just like that, we have our form all set up. Watch this. One click. I'm now right in to the back-end automation for this table. Awesome. Awesome. But gets better. Gets better. I know you love this, Marcus, so we did I it. I do. Pretty much just for you. No, just kidding. <laughs> It was, it was your number one ask in Flow Designer, I know, because I saw it come through. That is right, diagramming right there. Diagramming in Flow Designer. All right, folks. So, Amelia's looking at this, and she's seeing an approvals being asked for every record that's created in this table. Now, she doesn't want an approval to fire every single time. She actually wants it only to fire when a certain condition's met. So let's go ahead and inject some flow logic here. Let's say if, we're going to say the amount is greater than 1,000. Let's go ahead and add some conditions here. Set that up, let's grab the trigger record and the amount field. Let's say is greater than, and we'll say 1,000. Boom. Just like that, I was easily able to modify the logic, and now the approval is only going to fire if the amount is greater than 1,000. So I think that's pretty awesome. Let's go ahead and save that flow, close on out of here, and that's really it. Now the app is pretty much built. I know it's simple, but now the app is, is built. It's a tuition reimbursement use case. Now Amelia wants to get this into production. So what she's going to do is she's going to go ahead and click Submit. And what this does, it is actually fires off what we call a deployment task for the admin to actually review the application and deploy it. Now, here's the thing. I know what we showed was a simple app. Why? Because they give us only five minutes to do these demos. That's but right. <laughs> the reality is these templates, actually, you can create 80% of the app. So all they're really doing is filling in the blanks for their use case and then customizing additional logic with it. That's the power of you being able to create your own templates. And that's going to be a ton of innovation, innovation that has the guardrails that you need within those applications to feel that there's less or no risk in your business around all of these applications across the lines of business.